Hi, everybody. Good morning. Almost to the noon hour, so almost a good afternoon. I'm Austin Reed. Welcome to the Thursday edition of Central Valley Talk Live. Thanks for hanging out. Hit me up on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at Austin Reed on air. We have a number of guests in store for you today. We're going to be live and local until just after four o'clock, so make sure you stay with us. My first guest joining us live in our Tower District studios today is David Verde. How you doing, brother? Welcome. Thank you for having me today, Austin. David flew in from Salt Lake's Salt Lake City. Was yes, it today? Uh, yeah, yeah, this, morning, this I, morning I uh, left Salt Lake City around six, seven in the morning, and then I got here around eight a.m. Got you picked up and plane? slept for at that. least a good thirty to forty-five <laughs> minutes. Like woke up for the soda. Don't even really drink soda. Chugged it. Went back to sleep, and then here it we didn't are even now. Excited. Keep you awake. I thought that I was like, man, I feel like I'm gonna not be able to go back to sleep after this. So luckily, I was able to pass out. And but. Luckily, I'm here as well, and we're ready to get the party started. You're ready. Yeah, Halloween weekend is upon us. Now, uh, David is going to be performing at the 559 Halloween Bash. Yes. Um, We'll get into that in just a second, but I want to talk a little bit about you and your career uh, in music. So take it away. When did you start? Yeah, I was going to say, what direction do you want me to go? So the beginning phase would be 2017, to be exact, in a sense. Like, I started recording in a professional studio when I was four, so like 2003, 2004. Ish, but of course, I was like a baby at that sense, essentially. So, like, none of it was really feasible to like continue with. It was more of just a hobby. And then, as I got older, it kind of just stuck with me in a sense where I was like, okay, maybe I can turn this into a business of some sense. And then, what I ended up doing over time was managing other people. So, like, let's say there was a 559 Halloween bash in town, then you could contact me essentially, and then I could get you to perform. But I would be lying if I said at that time I was performing or making music because, like, it had been about 10 years or so. And then, um, just a friend of mine or just somebody at the time pretty much said, Hey, like, this is all really neat but I'd prefer to see you making the music, even though I didn't have anything. And then just them kind of giving me the idea, maybe hope, or I don't even know what the word is, but just like they gave me that jump, that push where like I probably wouldn't have done it on my own. So like took that leap of faith, gave it a go back then. And then strangely here I still am now. And now we're doing the 559 Halloween Bash. So tell me a little bit about uh, some of the musicians that you kind of look up to. Okay. Uh, looking up to wise could be like anywhere because like I listen to all different types of music so like I don't know like if I go back to like my childhood days like I lived with like my grandparents so like they always listen to different types of music compared to what I listen to now so like my grandma for example always listens to Michael Jackson okay we have like all of his magazines all of his (laughs) little action figurettes, CDs, whatever the case may be, we have it merchandise-wise. So, like, I probably know, like, every word to every Michael Jackson song, not by choice, but just because, like, (laughs) just growing up, like, literally that's all she played in the car, like, in and around the house, like, all that stuff. And then my grandpa, like, everybody laughs because, like, if you play, like, Check Yes or No or something by George Strait, I would know, like, every word. Yeah, because he was, like, huge in the country where, like, when I remember, like, around 2004 I'd be playing hip hop and he was just so disappointed like every time he'd be like oh like what are you doing like this trash like he just have like all these little names for it and stuff but now that I'm involved he's definitely more open to the idea and he like he'll critique my stuff and be yeah. honest like oh this one sucks or he'll say I really love this one but it was like funny to hear him say one sucked and I was like I really like that one <laughs> my when when I was uh was I in middle school? Yeah, I think I was in middle school. I was obsessed with Beastie Boys. Okay. And uh, my mom was like, what is this? Yeah. This is ridiculous, you know? Exactly. It's, it's funny like when it's just back, you know? And it's like, probably my great grandma probably had the same feeling when Thriller came on MTV. Right. Where, and then my right. grandma now, still listening to Michael Jackson, who was the star back then. It's just funny because it's like, I bet parents were so against that at the time, even though it wasn't as bad as some of the things we see on TV nowadays, but still it's like, it's just funny because it's like they're hypocrites. (laughs) Yeah, like they're definitely hypocrites and then they they might notice it at some point once you explain it to them like that, like, oh, dang, like, I guess you're right. So I've definitely missed out on some opportunities due to like the music thing of like fear, like my family, like thinking it'd be like too scary for me to like do something with Drake. Mm -hmm. I remember like he came to Sacramento years ago and I wanted to try to like meet him and my family was just like, no, like you're not going, like it sounds so dangerous. And then like, just so like sometimes some things don't work out for a reason and then like 
I can't complain. I think like I think between the 2,500 plus people we have coming this weekend, it ended up working out in the long run. So uh, you're going to be performing, obviously. Uh, I'm going to be hosting. Essentially, so I you're might hosting? I might surprise everybody yeah. and do like a new song that I just okay. made. It's not out yet. Okay. It's very different from what everybody's heard from me so far. I actually do have uh, my backup dancers who are going to be coming. So like if I don't specifically perform, they'll still dance to my music. Okay. But I'm going to be running and coordinating the event. So I don't know if I'm going to have time to hop on stage so this you're time. Be are you going to be emceeing? Pretty much. Yeah. Okay. Like it's okay. it's essentially it's your event. Yeah. Yeah, I was. Yeah. I gotta run back and forth between the door, make sure mm -hmm. this and that, and DJs running equipment, and uh, also probably run back and forth between the Azteca to kind of draw people over and just correlate everything going on. So essentially, I'm the eyes and ears along with Caitlin and Arc Flash Records, who will be assisting me heavily because, like, like they've been a huge help with like the social media, for example. Caitlin helps us run the That's Instagram, right. yeah. so like that wouldn't have been able to be done like without her like that's why it looks like so professional like I've even had like my personal friends hit me up like oh you got a social media manager now like oh you leveled <laughs> up like all this stuff so like even though like everybody else might not think it but like I appreciate it and then Arc Flash as well like I only met him July 3rd like which is so exact but like he's probably like one of my best friends and then like I've only known him for like a super short amount of time but like he's like one of the most like humble people I've met and like he doesn't even like rap which is hilarious like i wouldn't say he doesn't like it but he's not specifically a hip-hop fan what is what, what fan of music is he more he than? just he just went to um aftershock oh. so like and he doesn't like the newcomers so like he probably went to go see metallica and uh -huh. stuff so yeah. like when i was with or him rock. hanging out he was buying patches for his vest and stuff so we're <laughs> like night and day we have right. a picture with a famous rapper together it's uh -huh. funny because the rapper's in the middle and it's me and him, and then we just look like complete opposites, yet the, it's just so funny. So like, great though that we got him in on this opportunity to make something so big happen in a different genre, because now I'd like to maybe go into his genre and do shows. Sure. So like, it's definitely been an experience for us all. We're all around the like 21, 22 year old age. I think I'm the oldest or second to oldest. My manager, NorCal Next Up, Dom, is 24. Okay. I'm 22. And then the rest of us are between, like, 21 and 26. So it's all, like, pretty young people making this happen besides, like, our, like, friends who are local and stuff who've been way more than helpful getting rid of all of our tickets because, obviously, without our local people, we wouldn't have been able to get rid of any of those physical tickets. We would have just gotten rid of the 700 online. Now it's 2,500 physical plus the 700 yeah. online. And, like... We can't complain. So let's let's talk all about the event now. Um, again, it's going to be uh, tomorrow night, seven, 7 p.m. Tulare Street Bistro. It's going to be four minutes away from the exact venue where it was set to be, the Azteca Theater. The reason we're moving is because we have so many people coming that it's Just kind of demand, impossible huh? to like do it at the original spot. Like everybody knows who was going to be there the night after us i don't need to like name drop but like our show was pretty much just as big as theirs so just due to venue capacity come on over to the teller street bistro uh free tickets for ladies all night long and then free admission for all until 8:05 p.m and then after 8:05 p.m prices are subjected to what they are at the door so um now the how long do you think the event's gonna go uh, I'll be honest with you, till closer to midnight. Nice, okay. At least, yeah, because we're probably going to have the performances start around 7, 8, 7, 8 p.m., depending on just how everybody gets in and everything, like, um, door-wise, because we don't know what the demand's going to be at the door. And then, yeah, probably at least till at least till midnight. Expect to be in the house till like, after midnight, yeah. We were just looking at your Instagram. Um, I want to talk real quick about uh, what's next for you and, 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 your, and your musical uh, career. Mm, essentially, I just deleted a lot of music, to be honest, which, okay. like, a lot of people don't really care for that factor. Like, I've actually been in situations where they, like, won't let you delete your music or something. So I'm signed to GT Distribution. Shout out to Gold Toes and Slash Empire. So I have a distribution deal with Empire Records in San Francisco, California. And then that kind of gives me the power to put out my music to all these major platforms, get all these major opportunities. And it's just a, been a big help, to be honest. I'm glad he called me and gave me the opportunity. But um, 
I deleted a lot of my old stuff because I would like to go in like a new direction. And I think it's kind of like maybe all the new people I'm surrounding myself with and just all the new business where I'm just kind of trying to be as marketable as possible, as commercial as possible, and just as me as possible as well. And then like even though maybe those other songs were me, they were maybe me at a different time or just maybe a different quality than what I'm going mm -hmm. for today. So long story short, uh, which is not a sto short story, just expect like a lot of new stuff from us going okay. into the future. And then like we have San Jose Saturday, so you can come down to Tank Shop. You can Google that. It's Tank Shop. Uh, I don't know the exact address, but San Jose, California. You can look that up on Instagram or Google or contact me on my Instagram on the screen. And then we have Sacramento, December 31st. We just locked in Salt Lake City. We've locked in Las Vegas. And then we're working Ooh. on doing um, Lethbridge, Canada and Waikiki, sorry, Hawaii people, somewhere in Hawaii, <laughs> somewhere in Hawaii. gonna go crazy, turn up, love you, Hawaii. I'm so sorry I butchered that. But like, yeah, like, honestly, we're doing a lot of different cities and I'm pretty much gonna be headlining most of them. So it's gonna be a good opportunity for me and everybody involved to see new things. Cause I've never been to Hawaii. I've been to Canada for like a layover. So like, mm -hmm. these will be like new things. Like today, I've been to Fresno three times. So I came and did a radio interview with DJ Dougie some years ago, if, you, if you're familiar. What station is he on? Uh, this, he does a local uh, radio station. Okay. It was in the mountains. I don't remember uh, the exact one. I'll have to share that with you. Yeah. Um, and then I had came out here for a show in 2019 at the theater. And then during COVID, I actually headlined a show at the um, Le Kebab Mason. And it was just David Verde live. And we drew a great crowd. And we did it outdoors, of course. Right, right. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, everybody, uh, check out uh, 559 Halloween Bash, again, presented by David Verde. Uh, tomorrow night, 7 o'clock, Tulare Street Bistro. And uh, sounds like it's going to be a freaking off. Yeah, everybody pull up. We got a lot of dope posts. Go ahead and check them out on Instagram. Caitlin J. Lopez, Arc Flash Records, and NorCal Next Up. Everybody else involved as well. Thank you for coming out and helping. But essentially, it's going to be a movie, and we can't wait to see you guys again. Caitlin is uh, in studio behind the scenes today. You know, she comes on uh, Central Valley Talk many times. Yeah, I've seen I, the video she yeah, did on here last time. Uh, with Beaumont Media. And did I say that right? Yeah. Oh, I said it. Wow, that's a miracle. <laughs> uh, I got to get her to run my Instagram. Yeah, yeah, no, you really, no, no joke. I have her running my personal. I have her running the business ones. Like, yeah. she, yeah, she's definitely good at that. Like, great at it in the sense of, like, it's just you could do a lot of the stuff on your own. Like, for example, last night I sent her something and like she pretty much sent me the same thing back, which like I felt essentially like, could I do this on my own or could I have? And it's like I probably could have in a sense. But then at the same time, I would it wouldn't have come out exactly the same. So it's just like some people are like good at what they're good at. So it's like for me, out of my friends, like I'll be like joking, like, oh, like, are you guys the one on the radio right now? You know, and they're like, no, I'm like, well, like. I need to ask somebody who is so we can get some proper advice. And that's kind of what I've learned, too, is just, like, putting people in positions of doing what they're good at. So, like, I had a friend who's involved with this. He was on the phone in the beginning of this trying to conduct business. He no longer makes phone calls for me. I would not ever put him on the phone. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's like I just kind of, like, try to see, like, all right, this person's really good at this. Yeah. Let's leave it that way. Because right, exactly. I know what I'm good at. You know what you're good at. Yeah. I think if we can all correlate together, then it'll be a, a perfect, great, great team. Perfect team, yeah. yeah. Uh, good luck tonight. Uh, Thank tomorrow you. Night. I hope to see you there, even Absolutely. if it's just yeah, for a few minutes. I, I like maybe come try. through in the beginning, yeah, take yeah. a picture or something. You don't. I don't expect you to stay till midnight because that. I don't even think I'm I will. Old. No, I'm just kidding. Of I'm course, old. of course I will. I go to of bed at like ten. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, hey, I feel you. I, I would probably be in bed by that time if I wasn't here. To be honest with you guys, and I've got kids, but twins. Bring, come through pictures in the beginning and everything just for the media experience because some of the artists might even like to meet you and everything. You could yeah. even do some quick in-person interviews because we have some pretty big people coming through. So yeah. let me know. We'll make All it right. happen. Thank Sounds you for having me through, though. I appreciate yeah. it. And Thank I'd you. like to follow up with you next time around so we anytime. can give you an update and let you know what we're really going to be doing as a team because today I was really just promoting myself. Maybe we could set up four chairs and have everybody on next time. Yeah, that would be cool. awesome. That'd be dope. Sounds good. All right. Thank you. Thank you, brother. David Verde, everybody. I'm Austin Reed. You're watching Central Valley Talk. Coming up next, we've got a famous TikToker in studio. And, and get this. This guy has like 500,000 followers. Uh, and he's from Fresno. That's next.